fiction, poetry, literary criticism, culture, and linguistics. She has published 24 books, three of which won renowned era prizes. Um, her latest book is entitled Chahazad in Seductive Narrative, Reading in Feminist Fiction. Uh, published with that by Dar El Alum Publishers in Beirut, in Algeria in 2008. Her publications deal with social, political, and religious taboos in modern Arabic texts. She has also been an active contributor to many Arabic journals, periodicals, and literary magazines across the Arab world. Dr. Wujdan. <laughs> This phenomenon clearly appears in contemporary Arabic literature, specifically Arabic novels, which were written by various old writers who utilized the fictional techniques such as characters, uh, protagonists, plots, dialogue, monologue, etc., to explore their condemnation, the humiliation of the black Arabs, and their racial social segregation. I will highlight a few examples. First, the Indian novel, Tam Aswadra Ahasawda, Black Taste, Black Smell, by Ali Mughni, internalizes the tribal Yemeni society and the severe social classification of the black Arabs, from centering the gentilese class, al sadid to the marginalizing the servants class, al akhdam Number two, the Saudi novel, Fikhaf al Ra'iha, The Traps of the Smell, by Yusuf al-Hamid, portrays the racist vision against the black Arabs in the conservative Saudi society. 
the Emirati novel, Rehan by Mesut Sakhrabasi, openly highlights the ordeal of the Emirati black Arabs after their liberation from slavery and describes their frustration from their society after the revolution. Number four, the Bahraini novel, The Sprint, Al Yanabiya by Abdullah Khalifa, exposes the Bahraini social system that dealt inferiorly with the black Arabs after granting them their emancipation and declaring their freedom from slavery in the Gulf countries. Number five, the Jordanian novel, uh, The Statue of the Slaves, Tistaqabit, by Samih Afrez, documents the history of slavery in Sudan and the white men's practices in hunting, enslaving, and humiliating the black Arabs. Number six, the Sudanese novel, Hujul Minshur, Anchor Bracelets of Thorns, by Bufina Khabar Mekki. The novel highlights the dimensions of the anti-black Arabs phenomenon and the daily suffering of black Arabs, particularly black Sudanese and Arab countries. Due to the limited time, I will highlight only one, <laughs> one novel, uh, this novel. Ankle bracelets of thorn, which will be short. Actually, the, the writer is a black Arab writer. This novel attacks many social, political, and religious taboos. Also, the black Arab patriarchal practices and systems such as, uh, sorry, black Arab patriarchal system and its practices such as sexual and physical uh, abuse. However, the main theme of this novel is the perception of inferiority held against black Arabs. This is done through the two Sudanese protagonists, Nasra, who is a female, and Mahjoub, who is a male, and their journey from Sudan to Saudi Arabia was to find employment. Black male protagonist Mahjoub. Mahjoub is a young Sudanese black man, university educated, who went to Saudi Arabia from Umrah, a, big, uh, a pilgrimage to Mecca at any time of the year, and then decided under his ambitious wife's urging to stay in Saudi Arabia to work. The narration highlights the detail of the meeting between Mahjoub and Adnan Saleh, a white Saudi entrepreneur who promises Mahjoub after verification of Mahjoub's credentials an opportunity by giving him a job that fits with his university's degree to alleviate his financial crisis. The following excerpt describes the beginning of Mahjoub's journey with Adnan Salehi who revealed the way that Arab cultures treat black Arabs and judge them due to their skin color. Bill's Bell, concept according to the voice. I will, write, I will read it in Arabic to be like more accurate. في عربة كان عدنان الصالحي يستحثه على الركوب بسرعة فتح محجوب الباب الأمامي للسيارة لكن عدنان الصالح استحثه قائلا في حزن اركب من الخلف يا أخ اركب من الخلف ثم فتح عدنان باب السيارة الأمامي وجلس خلف المقود وأغلق الباب خلفه بعمق تلفت محجوب حوله في مخانة ثم كفكف من طاله عن رجله اليسرى وهو يرفعها إلى داخل عربة السيارة الخلفية وكاد أن ينجف على وجهه حين تحركة العرب البوكس بسرعة مفاجئة حال صعوده عليها هدر الدم غليظا داخل عروقه النافرة عندما تبين الملزة السوداء بشعرها الكثيف وسخلاتها التوقع بينما ناجة هزيلة تقبع على أرضية العربة البوكس وقف معترضا شاعرا بالذل والمهانة وبدأ, عمل وبدأ عملية جلد الذات التي أدمنها منذ مفارقته لبلده This Arab culture is exemplified by Adnan Salihi's name and his attitude 
His first name, Adnan, refers to the ancient Arab tribe which inhabited Al Jazeera and Al Hijaz. And his last name, As Salihi, means a righteous person. Adnan's attitude reflects a cultural level that shackles the black Arabs in their low class of servants. A prime example in this scene, Adnan's shaq when Mahjoub tried to share with him the front passenger seat of the pickup car and Adnan's angry voice at what he perceived as a deal from a black man. The following excerpt reveals the stereotypical job of black Arabs that belongs to slave in the Arab cultural mindset. This is like a dialogue between Adnan Salihi and Mahdou. I will tell you, Sudan, we are going to take a look at the point of view. Tell the army who is asking you that you have a rag. Rag from the shepherd. هل فهمت؟ قل له إنك تعمل عندي منذ سنتين أن وظيفتك تنظيف الحظيرة وطعم البهائم تقطق عرق الجواني في يعقوقه والتزم الصمت إذا فقد حدد عدنان الصالح وظيفته منذ الآن في هذا الليل البهيم في هذا الصحراء المظلمة المغلقة لقد كان يظن في أسوأ توقعاته من الأمر لن يتعدى مسك دفتر حسابات أن يعمل راعيا فهذا ما لم يخطر على باله عند فقوق the structure of this scene symbolizes the relationship between the two protagonists. The white master who gives the orders uh, describing Mahjoub, my shepherd, and the black servant Mahjoub who must obey silently, he remains silent. Mahjoub's monologue reveals the depth of psychological alienation when he faces the stereotype of a black Arab's career, shepherd. His better feeling recall the pre-Islamic black poet Ankara better feel better feel from this stereotypical of a black Arab career when he stated in anger. In the Abd al Yusun al Kara wal Far, when the Yusun al Halba wal Sar. A black female, a protagonist, Nasr. She is a beautiful political activist educated at Khartoum University. She was forced to marry her husband, Marghani, who is an English a teacher and woodwork. He got an opportunity to teach English in Saudi Arabia. They have two daughters who study at elementary public school in Saudi Arabia and face daily insults because of their black skin. The scene, the following scene, is set through the flashback in Nasra's conscious, which reveals the double consciousness of the double identity of being both Arab and black. Laysat Arabi, تشككت في هذا بعد إقامتها في السعودية، وتذكر ذلك اليوم حين جاءت ابنتها تشتكي لها. من أن زميلاتها في المدرسة يعير يعيرنها بأنها عبدة. دخلت في البداية في منزل جدها بالسودان توجد وثيقة طويلة في برواز مذكر تثبت نسبها العربي وتسلسل أنساب أجدادها العباسيين القريشيين. كانت تعتقد أن ابنتها عربية يمتد نسبها للعباس عم النبي ولكن ما هو الاختلاط من مجتمعات العرب الصرفة يعابيها ويسقط عنها صفة العروبة رغم أنها عربية لسان وثقافة. End of quote. بثينة مكي portrays two black characters related to the two generations, Nasra and her daughter, who both are powerless and speechless from this racial discrimination. However, however, this scene which explores the phenomena could be read by three literary criticism of it. Number one, sociological, this is the <laughs> sociological approach. When Nasra's daughter, quote, her classmate at school used the humiliating term abdic, female slave, to mock her, end of a quote. This excerpt explores the new generation's behavior. Her daughter's classmates, that is against black Arab. This behavior was inherited from the Arab social and cultural system. Number two, historical approach. When Nasra realizes 
that her Arab lineage embedded in the ancient manuscript at her grandfather's home in Saudi is merely incomplete. Nazra denies her descent from Prophet Muhammad's uncle Al Abbas when she finds out this lineage is a falsehood. By doing this, she essentially declines her Arabism. Number three, psychological approach reveals the intense psychological conflict between what Nazra previously believed in, when what Nazra previously believed in, and what she must abandon. She essentially strips away from the, her Arab identity. She is not Arab, and keep only her African identity. To conclude and save time for Q and A. <laughs> So this is a brave novel as an example that it provides the black Arabs with a new image of slavery. The slavery of Arab identity, the ankle bracelet of Thor. This novel picked only one uh, conscious, one consciousness instead of double consciousness according to uh, the voice and one identity instead of two identities. Uh, there is like many things I have to say, but I will stop. But thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajan, for a very thought-provoking presentation. Next, we have Areem Tesaikin. I hope I said it right. <laughs> Reem is a PhD candidate in the Literature Department at the University of California, San Diego. Her research examines shifts in the ways socio-political themes are presented in post-9-11 Arab American novels. A chapter of her dissertation in progress is set to be included in an upcoming edited volume on contemporary Arab American literature. Reem obtained her BA in Creative Writing and her MA in Near Middle Eastern Studies from the University of Arizona and was a lecturer at University of San Diego for four years prior to starting her PhD. She currently serves as editor-in-chief of Alchemy, UCSD's Journal of Translation,